If you identified with the existential dread from Bo Burnham's song 30 in his new special Inside, then we have the full musical and feature-length film for you. Today on Full Stop Reviews, we're going to be talking about Jonathan Larson's movie adaptation of Tick, Tick, Boom. So Tick, Tick, Boom isn't an exact adaptation of the original musical, but it uses the original musical to underscore a kind of autobiographical week in the life of Jonathan Larson as he tries to open a workshop of a musical he's been working on for eight years. The movie explores the fear that Larson feels as he approaches his 30th birthday and tries to balance his art, day job, love life, and friends. So the original musical was this very bare bones, one man show and was reimagined into a still pretty simple three person show after his death. In this movie, just like other musical adaptations like uh, the last five years and even Chicago, the movie kind of expounds on the cinematic universe that a regular theater goer would have just had to imagine. But I think sometimes it's almost a detriment in this movie, as in parts of the movie are literally being narrated by the songs, um, like you're looking at a children's picture book. You have the words and then you have the picture that goes with the words. So I think it's almost a little bit to the detriment in certain parts of the movie. The movie has a huge number of musical theater cameos from different icons. A uh, huge shout out to Laura Benanti for always being the funniest person ever. Um, especially in the song Sunday, which was Larson's reimagining of the song Sunday from Sunday in the Park with George by Stephen Sondheim. That song in particular just shows that, you know, these are two different mediums and sometimes movies are able to capture an image or a thought process in just a magical way that you're not always able to do in theater. And that song isn't even the only parallel, I would say, from this show to Sunday in the Park with George because both shows kind of explore the tumultuous life of an artist and kind of explore someone who is absolutely unable to manage their love life and their art. We actually also see Stephen Sondheim, Stephen Sondheim, multiple times in the movie. Uh, he was kind of a guiding voice for Larson and he really encouraged him to continue his pursuits. I think the movie does an amazing job at showing the grief and doubt and just overall turmoil that somebody will have when they're pursuing a dream that's off the beaten path. The movie definitely has a sense of hope for the future, but the direction is definitely tinged with this sort of ominous sadness because obviously now we know that Larson died a few years after the show came out, uh, actually on one of the opening preview nights for what would become a huge smash hit, Rent. Um, and obviously that wasn't in the original. Uh, it was a little more introspective and critical of oneself and the artist creating the work. I think that makes uh, one of the last songs in the movie, which is absolutely beautiful, the song Why, makes it a little more fatalistic than it necessarily is in the original musical. My verdict is going to be a green light. I think Andrew Garfield absolutely nails Jonathan Larson. He just really does portray the sense of dread and that he's running out of time. And it has a just an amazing ensemble cast. I do have to say, the singing is very edited and most of the people singing are professional musical theater artists uh, and we know they can sing, so I'm not really sure why they felt the need to edit their voices so freaking much. It sounds like an episode of Glee at some points, um, but overall, the entire cast is really phenomenal. 
the drama and major emotional points of this movie, especially everything regarding the AIDS epidemic, are heightened and really portrayed so beautifully. But on the flip side, there is just something about movie adaptations that will never ever be able to capture the comedy of a live performance. Um, you know, there's a reason that live performance is still around and stand-up comedy specials are done in front of a live audience. Uh, and that's just something that all adaptations are gonna have to deal with. I would definitely encourage you to watch clips from the show. There are some clips of Jonathan Larson performing it. Um, I also really enjoy the encore's presentation with uh, Leslie Odom Jr. and Lin-Manuel Miranda and Karen Olivio. And speaking of Lin-Manuel Miranda, this is actually his first directorial debut for a feature-length film, and I think he does a really good job. It's very clear that this is a project that he holds super near and dear to his heart, and I think he really does pull some amazing acting out of the actors, and kind of gives a fantasy vision without it becoming too over the top. Uh, I think if you've seen maybe um, In the Heights, that movie does have a very larger than life personality that kind of dabbles in these huge colors and you know people dancing up the side of a building and I don't think that would have been great for this movie so I think he does just the right amount of fantasy that you know you're able to do when you're doing a movie rather than a live stage performance. So that's it for me. Let me know what you thought of the movie um, and if there's any musical adaptations that you'll be looking forward to in the future. I know I'm looking very forward to West Side Story. It's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> All right, until next time, I'm Alex, and this has been Full Stop Reviews. Bye.